right guys, welcome back for another episode. We finally reached 10,000 miles on my G80 M3. And this is gonna be a review, right? The review that I've accumulated in the past couple years and also the past couple thousand miles of owning this car. And for the people that are watching this video, if you guys clicked on this video because you're on the fence about getting a G80 or you purchased one and you're waiting for it to come in uh, from transit, this should give you a little more insight about the purchase you just made or the purchase you're about to make. As you guys know, my channel here is dedicated to BMW content, and for the past couple years, I've owned this G80 M3. Uh, the specific color for this car is uh, individual Imola Red. Um, it is a color that I've always admired uh, from the F8X, and also on the E46 platform where uh, this color was introduced. But as you can see, this car has changed a lot since uh, picking it up. Uh, just to give you guys a little backstory, if you guys haven't uh, been introduced to this channel, I picked this car up at the BMW Performance Center in Greer, South Carolina. And if it's something that's still available, and I've been hearing some things about that, it is something that you absolutely should do if it makes sense for you, right? Uh, taking the performance delivery of this car makes it a so much better experience than just taking delivery of the car at the dealership. So I can tell you this, the first time getting into the car and me getting into the car right now, this is still a special car. Um, I remember the first day picking it up, opening the doors, looking through the non tinted windows, looking at this interior, seeing all the different features and functions, right? And seeing what technology has changed because uh, before this I had a F80 M3. And we'll probably do a video about the comparison about two of those platforms because I would say now I've had some seat time in a G80 where I can give a good comparison to the F80. Um, but getting into this car, you already know it's a special car, um, whether you guys have the carbon buckets or um, the non-carbon buckets. As you can see, we're sitting in carbon bucket seats and I've went through a whole spiel about if carbon bucket seats should be an option for you. There's multiple videos about that. And also I have a video about how to get in and out of the carbon bucket seats because um, one of the things that you wanna do is maintain these bolsters. And a lot of those videos do help you out when you wanna get the right method of getting in and out of the, the car. So some of the things that make this car even special is that you know coming from the F80 uh, platform, BMW has listened to their drivers and kind of went through many different details on making this very unique, right? When it comes to the M traction control, you have a uh, 10 stage traction control that allows you to, you know, fine tune how much uh, grip you have when you go onto these skid pads or on the track days. Um, a lot of people do play around with this on the street, not highly recommended because what happens is you'll end up on M3 list, wrecked or copart. And I've mentioned that, I think we all have seen that before. So, but also too, this car has so many other options that are geared towards the driver, right? Whether you wanna have some fun on the track, whether you guys wanna to go to Mexico, there's a lot of different options in this car that makes this very special. Some things that make this car even special too is the seating position, the way everything's laid out. And it's, when I say it's driver focused, everything that I need when I'm driving, whether it's driving it hard on the street, everything is focused on the driver in this realm, right? Whether if you guys opted for the ZF8 speed um, or if you guys opted for the manual transmission, everything feels very comfortable and there's nothing that feels out of place. And I know people have asked me, and I'll bring this up into this portion of the video is, how do the carbon buckets feel with this contraption in the middle, right? People call it the nut holder. It doesn't bother you, to be honest. Um, depends. Everything really depends on your body shape, and I mentioned it multiple times in those videos where I give a review about the carbon buckets and also how to get in and out. Um, driving a manual transmission in this is very easy. Um, it's very forgiving. And you know we'll definitely have to talk a little more about that in a future video because there's so much to talk about about this car. Every time I get into this car, since day one, it feels special. Getting into the car right now, it, it definitely still feels very special. And we're almost about two years into this car. You know, this summer, I believe June, was my two year mark of picking up this car. And it's been an absolutely, you know, incredible time owning this car. And we'll get into a lot more details into this video. All right, so one of the questions that you're probably asking is that, is this a good daily driver, right? It's people that want to buy a car like this, um, with four doors or the two doors, is it daily bull, right? Can you take it to the track on the weekends and is a car that you can actually drive to work or run your daily errands with? 
Absolutely. Even if you mod the car, slam the car, there's many different ways you can make this as a daily. I think this car is one of the best cars you can daily. Um, it's proven to be very reliable, which we'll talk later on. And just to give you an idea, at the invasion of Orlando, after the whole weekend event, I picked up my wife. She was staying at my in-law's house along with our son. And I literally had a car seat right next, right behind my driver's seat, and it was no problems at all, right? It was very comfortable for the family. There was enough room to put a car seat where my wife could sit back here and, you know, hang out with my son. And it was no problem at all. You know, it was a great car to take that road trip. And it's a two and a half hour road trip, right, back to where we live. And I gotta say, the amount of functionality with this car, with performance, and also the creature comforts of having a luxury car is by far one of the best cars in this price range. Um, and don't get me wrong, this is not a cheap car. This is not a car that is taken lightly. There's many different options you can get that can make this car over you know, you know, $100,000. Um, if you guys watch what I paid for this car, we're about $85,000 mark, right? Brand new, right? This is two years ago, right? Where prices have been changing over the years because cost of raw materials, cost of labor, everything has gone up and BMW has made those price increases. So here's something else to add, right? If you guys have a big family and you guys carry, you know, multiple kids or other people in your family in the car and you need the full four seats, um, the way my passenger seat is where my wife sits normally and I have plenty enough room, right? My wife is 5'7". I have plenty enough room to move my legs around. Uh, my knees are not hitting the carbon buckets. Um, there's definitely enough room to me to relax, to slouch over, um, and it, it feels very comfortable. One of the best things about this car is that the potential is absolutely um, unlimited, right? This is one of the, the best cars to be a supercar killer. Uh, we've seen the S58 platform make huge numbers, huge power numbers, where with a simple tune and some bolt-ons, this car can be an absolute beast. These cars are beating your Lambos out there, are beating your GTRs out there, and becoming more reliable than the GTRs. Um, obviously, I haven't done any tuning modifications to this car. Uh, there's been aesthetic mods underneath the engine bay, but it doesn't mean that we're not gonna be doing that in the future. Um, as of right now, I don't have any aspirations of making this car faster. For me, personally, this car feels fast enough for me, right? And I know a lot of people, when they buy this car and platform, there's many different options that you can do um, and the way you build your cars. But for me, I feel like this car is fast enough for me, but who knows later on down the road. Something to add to that too, back in the day, it was to get 500 horsepower was a hard task, right? Whether you had um, the older M3s, whether you had the F chassis, right? The, the uh, F3Xs, and I came from the Subaru community. Having 500 horsepower was like very few of us out there. So with the G80, they do come with 500 horsepower, right? Especially with the competitions. Something to know too, BMW definitely underrates these cars. So whatever horsepower is advertised, it's definitely a lot more than that. Maybe not significantly, but it does produce more horsepower than what it's advertised. So when the G8X first came out, a lot of people kind of coined this car to be soulless, right? And as the generations have moved away from being naturally aspirated to uh, twin power turboed um, vehicles, we've heard the term soulless, right? It's happened in the F8X and it's also happened in the G8X. To some degree, I do have to agree, when you first get a stock one, it is soulless, right? Um, the reason why I say it's soulless in certain aspects of it is that when it's stock, this car is absolutely quiet, right? Whether it's being in the car, it's well insulated from all the road noises and what that insulation takes away from is hearing what you wanna hear, right? You wanna hear the engine, you wanna be able to hear the exhaust. Uh, a lot of that is gonna be manufactured through the speakers, right? We all know that BMW and also many other car brands have pumped uh, fake road noises and also, I'm sorry, fake exhaust tones into the car to make you a little bit more engaged. But a lot of that could be fixed with some modifications. So this car becomes soulless at a factory, but as you get into the modifications, in my personal opinion, you bring that rawness back, right? And one of the biggest things for you, whether you guys have different tastes in exhaust tones, exhaust is one of the biggest things to make this car even more engaging, right? Whether you're ripping through the gears on the ZF8 speed, or if you're ripping through the gears on a manual transmission, having the right exhaust tone for you 
makes it so much of a better driving feel and it allows you to really enjoy this car when you take it to the track or take it to Mexico, it's, it's, it becomes less slowless. Um, and as you add modifications, in my personal opinion, uh, it definitely changes the dynamics of the enjoyment of the car because you add features that you would want to do, right? Whether it's suspension, aesthetic mods, or even more performance mods. So for the ones that really think this car is soulless, wait until we get into the hybrids, right? Wait until we get to the ones that are just full electric. Those are the cars that are going to be coin soulless, in my personal opinion. Um, I think this generation has changed a lot in the previous generations, um, but BMW has definitely made a different role into what their future is, and we know the next generation of M's are going to be hybrids. So one of the best parts about owning the G80 M3 is being part of the BMW community. If you guys are just first getting into the BMW community, right, whether you're coming from a different uh, car brand, um, I'm sure you guys have gone to events for your car brand, but the BMW community does things very different, right? And we are a tight, close-knit group of people where we showcase our passion, right? The cars. And we go to these events, whether it's a Beamer Invasion event, um, and you can see it through all our event movies, and you can see the passion behind people that modify their cars, and how excited people are actually to meet other people that they met online, right? With their Instagram buddies and stuff. Um, it is one of the best parts about owning this car is having that close knit community where, you know, we can, you know, share ideas, um, go to events and actually, you know, talk about life, talk about, you know, for me, I just became a new father and stuff. Right. And I'd be able to have those conversations with other G80 owners that have gone through that process too. And it's being able to connect with people all across the world. And when you think about you know, any community, right? People could say they're very global, right? But I really think the BMW world and also the passion behind what we do is very global. And we see it throughout many different events and many different events throughout the world. Um, but very specifically, the G80 community has been very tight, very close knit, even more than the BMW community itself, in my personal opinion. And if you go to any of these shows these days, whether it's, you know, a Beamer Invasion event or Cars and Coffee, a lot of the cars you do see at these events are going to be G80s, right? G82s. Um, and it, it's, it's crazy to see. Uh, if you guys are really thinking about getting to this, you know, uh, platform, there's one of the best things about having so many, you know, being one of the most dominated communities in the BMW world is that there's so many supporting modifications. There's so many supporting um, technical supports, right? People that could, you know, help tune your car, people can help um, code your car, things like that. Um, when it comes to different modifications, there's so many modifications from performance mods, wheels, um, carbon fiber accessories. And if you guys are really, you know, interested about modifying your car, this has so many different things you can modify. Anything from your small detailed buttons to um, your carbon fiber accessories to wheel suspension, there's so many things that's unlimited. That takes me to the next point. And as we mentioned about the community, that's one of the biggest aspects that keeps me in this platform is the community. Um, before this whole G80 and also my previous F80, I've thought about joining or getting a Cadillac CTSV and kind of going that route. But if you think about that community as compared to what the BMW does, um, it's, it's, it's a big difference, right? Um, I like modifying my car and, you know, obviously this platform has much more modifications you could do in the CTSV. And also I just think that there's more, you know, G80 owners as compared to CTS uh, owners. So one of the things you're probably thinking too is that having a high performance car like this, right, and a good daily driver, there has to be a twist, right? Um, and reliability has been a topic that people have talked about. Having this car for the past almost two years and also 10,000 miles, this car has given me zero problems. Um, and we know that the S58 platform has been very reliable, right? The S58 has been out since 2019 with the X3Ms and X4Ms. And in those platforms, people have made insane power on stock blocks. But obviously there's a threshold that you may reach that you may need some supporting mods, um, which is why some people have done a full engine rebuilds to make sure that everything is fortified. But we know that one of the biggest issues on the F80, because I came from that, was the crank up, right? So when the S58 platform came about, BMW has made uh, features, right? The forged crankshaft was one of the features that they definitely improved on on the S58 platform. 
And this allows more torque, right, at a high capacity. And, you know, for the ones that are looking to make crazy power, yeah, this, this will do it for you, right? But obviously there's gonna be some limits. So hopefully this 10,000 mile review has given you a little bit more insight, right? Whether you guys are on the fence of purchasing a G at X platform, or if you guys already purchased one, this is gonna solidify your um, purchase, right? And if you guys have any more inputs or wanna chime in, let us know down in the comments because people do read the comments and they get more insight from the community. And I know for myself, I read every single comment and the ones that provide definitely good input, I definitely chime in to my best of my ability. And if there's something that I can't answer, I'm hoping one of you guys can help answer too. But I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, stay tuned, there's so much more content that I have coming and um, it's gonna be very exciting for the rest of the year. So stay tuned guys and I wanna thank you guys again and I'll see you on the next video.